If you want to find out how to create and control almost any type of IoT device with an ESP32, you're in the right place because that's exactly what I'm going to show you over the next few minutes. And if you saw my first video in this series on ESP Rainmaker, don't forget to stick around to the end since there are a few important changes that are now available in the latest release of Rainmaker for the Arduino IDE, along with some other important news. Hello, I'm John McRae. I run this channel to share my Maker adventures sometimes involving the release of magic smoke. So let's get into it. I have a large LifePo4 battery bank and I've developed my own BMS over several years. And, and now is the time to add some remote monitoring and control to it. The Rainmaker library has many devices to, ready to go, but as usual, they don't quite meet my needs. So here's how to make a custom device in the Arduino IDE. First, we'll need a little terminology. Each ESP32 can have a node which can have several devices attached to it. Each device can have several parameters attached and each parameter can have a user interface like text or slider or a toggle switch. For my battery management system, I will have uh, parameters like voltage, delta and also configurable limits like a minimum and maximum voltage and a maximum uh, delta. I also want to be able to override the ESP32 algorithm and switch charging and discharging on and off manually with a couple of toggle switches. So let's get into the code. But before I do, remember everything I'm about to show you will allow you to configure your very own custom application. I'd be very interested to hear about what you plan to make in the comments below. So let's go through it step by step. And don't worry about making notes. I've put all my code on GitHub and linked that in the description below. So you can just press pause and replay any bits you need to as we go along. Okay, let's get to it. The headers, first of all, Rainmaker header, the Wi-Fi header and the provisioning header. Very straightforward, needed for every Rainmaker app. Then some default settings. You'll see how those are used uh, later, but basically the defaults for voltage, a minimum voltage limit, a maximum voltage limit, a maximum uh, delta, the difference between the cells, and then the default value for each of the switches that we're going to use. Um, some control variables so that we can manipulate those um, in our app. Then what we're looking at is uh, initializing our pins, uh, a charge enable switch, a load enable switch and um, a GP the GPIO0 which we use for um, initializing, resetting the app if we need to and anything else you want to for that matter. Obviously you have to give a name for provisioning and we'll see more about that in one of the tips I have uh, later on and one of the changes that um, Espressif have put in since we last talked. Okay, so this um, custom device needs to be declared and I've called it battery. I've named it battery, which is different from this battery over here. And its type is a custom device battery. And that is the, the hanger that we're gonna hang everything else onto. We'll just ignore the uh, provisioning at the moment. That's just a standard set of lines um, for each Rainmaker app. This is the callback. This is the bit that decides what the app will do when it receives a message. We're going to ignore that for the moment and we'll carry on uh, with that later. Now into the setup, we need to uh, initialize our pins obviously and set them to our default states. Now we need to collect, create the node. That's the bit that we see on the screen. Basically on the opening screen of uh, the phone app, we will see a node and I have called it my BMS node. Then to our node on the inside page, we would add some parameters. So here's my first parameter, param, voltage param, I've called it. I've called it voltage V with that type. And here we see the use of our default uh, values, which I forced to a float because I want decimal uh, values of voltage to read and I've made it read only. Um, the device is gonna be measuring that voltage and so I don't need to be writing it. So then we add it to our, our battery. We just hang it on by calling battery add param. 
and with what we have declared above. So um, the only difference with this, uh, this first parameter is I am going to declare it as a primary parameter and that means it will be displayed on the front page. And we need to get its, um, its handle by name. So voltage V matches this voltage V here and that allows that to be displayed on the front page. Next parameter we mentioned is that delta parameter again declared in the very same way. This time it's an integer because um, if it gets much over 100 I'm going to be uh, doing something. A low voltage uh, limit uh, we can adjust again it's going to be a float and I've made that right only okay and the same for the high voltage param it's right only um, again forced to a float and the max delta that we're going to allow that's another parameter uh, in millivolts this time as an integer um, and that again is a right parameter so each of these parameters we just hang on to uh, our initial device now we want some control devices so what we do is we add a parameter in this case called charge enable as you can see it has a default value and it's read and write and then we assign a, U, a UI type to it and this is a toggle okay so that's the little toggle switch that you can see on the right there and then again we hang this onto our battery device and we do the same with the next the load enable switch and it's that straightforward to set up there are a couple of other things that need to be hung onto our battery device first of all it needs to know what to do when it receives a message so we have to show it where our callback routine is so our callback function we've declared above and we'll go into that in a moment then add our device to the node so node gets our device called battery and that is basically it all done now all we need to do is go and look at our callback which takes these standard parameters you'll need the device name and the parameter name and you need it because if a message comes in with the parameter low parameter name low voltage I know that in this case I want to copy the value that has been received and put it into min voltage and then I'll update and report all of my parameters if I change a switch for example the charge enable switch here I'm going to copy the value received boolean value into charge enable I'm going to update and report all of the values which you do each time and then I am going to flip the switch to either enable or uh, disable depending on the value that came in and so this is the the core of the the behavior of the application and it really is that simple. Now for the latest news on ESP Rainmaker. Espressif released a new version of the phone app uh, back on the 8th of June. It looks much nicer. Um, it's better than that. However, we have things called node grouping. So you can gather your devices together uh, into logical groupings. Like you might have one for the office. You might have one for your home. You might have one for the garage etc etc and you can also share nodes with other users such as uh, your partner your kids or whatever you have in mind time zone configuration is now supported on a per node basis so you can have different nodes on in different places in different time zones uh, for you world travelers has anyone traveled recently and you have voice services the the links are into alexa and google voice assistant oh i said the word i'm sorry um, into google voice assistant are provided within the application uh, also provisioning you can now um, save your home network credentials in the app to allow you to provision faster and of course as i mentioned before 
it looks a whole lot prettier as well. But there have been changes in the Arduino IDE as well. Do you remember the 2D barcode on Windows doesn't display properly in the serial monitor? Well, um, Espressive have made the URL and the credentials available in the serial monitor along with the barcode so you can just type them into the app and um, provisioning can continue as normal. You'll remember from last time that we had a series of techniques to help you along when things didn't work out. Well, Espressive addressed that and they have provided two new functions. Rainmaker Factory Reset, which does a factory reset the um, on the device so we don't have to do a manual flash erase. But also, if you change locations for your device or change your Wi-Fi details, there is a Rainmaker Wi-Fi Reset. And that resets the cached Wi-Fi parameters, so it's much easier to change networks. Both of these are included in the code that I've uploaded to GitHub, so make sure to check that out. In order to access these new features, you need to install the very latest alpha version, not via the board's manager, but by following the instructions, and then you know you're working with the very latest version, when you can see uh, two examples. That about wraps it up for this episode, so if you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.